Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Olga is here. For those of you who haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. Please hit the bell as well to get the latest notifications about the videos I post out there for you guys. And let's go ahead and jump into today's video. So, I have this lovely box right here and I've been sitting on this for <laughs> A while because I wanted to play with these eyeshadows and see how they perform before filming. This is the box and this is called the Smashbox Create and Transform Masterclass Palette. This I purchased at Sephora. I do not have shipping information for you guys because even when I purchase on the website mine is free so I'm sorry, but all of the information about shippings and returns is on Sephora's website and you can look it up for yourself. Also, I didn't purchase this online. I actually went into the Clackamas Town Center Sephora and purchased it there. This palette retails for $65. It states on the website that it's the value of $220. It basically isn't just the eyeshadows. You are getting these eyeshadows right here you are getting these transformers you are also getting these um there is a bronzer there is a uh, contour there is a highlight blusher and these lipsticks so it's kind of like all in all kind of really inclusive palette the idea behind it is that you can do multiple looks complete a look using only one palette i think it's a great concept let's go ahead and see if it actually works the shelf life of this palette is 24 months i keep mine longer because i try to take care of my things and if i keep them in stable conditions they will last longer so when i look on sephora's website for the information to see how much is contained in each product it's even though the information that is given is detailed, it's a bit confusing. So the way I broke it down in my mind and how I understand is that all of these guys right here, so these eyeshadows and these transformers, with the exception of these two guys right here, uh, so all of these 16 contain uh, 0 0.28 ounces of product, which is 8 grams per product. Now, those two guys right here, these two squares, these cheek transformers, contain 0 0.17 ounces or 4.8 grams of product. And these guys right here, the same thing. So they also contain 0 0.17 ounces or 4.8 grams of product. Now, the lipsticks, the six lipsticks right here, they contain 0 0.42 ounces or 12 grams of product. Now here comes the exciting part. This is what I really enjoy and I want to show you. So all of these things come out, you can definitely pop them out, you don't have to carry the whole heavy thing with you. So all of them pop out. And it kind of makes it easier if you just want to take portions and then you're left with something like this and you can keep them in it or when you're traveling um, the assumption is that you can just take pieces of this palette depending on what you need. It comes with this book right here and this book provides you with different tips and tricks on how to use the palette. Right now we're going to go ahead and uh, do the swatches and then come back and I'll talk about the swatches a little bit.
been removed from here. So I will try to do the look here, but I will try to like be very careful and not put the product here because I just don't want to infect it or irritate it. So if my eyeshadow job will be sort of <laughs> lopsided, that's on purpose because I just don't want to infect that area. Now that we have done the swatches. I want to point out right away one thing. When I swatch, I don't always like how something is swatching. It doesn't mean that I will immediately disapprove or judge the product that it's a bad product, but I do want to throw it out there. Also, when I look into their leaflet, look at these swatches. I mean, they look terrific. Makes you want to buy this stuff really bad. <laughs> but my swatches look like nothing like this. Also, I did not swatch the lipsticks because I just don't know how necessarily to go about swatching these lipsticks. And to be honest with you, when I tried swatching them, they they really don't have any pigment. I'm going to go into this black for you guys. This is what you're getting when you're going into the black. This is what you're getting when you're going into this purple. This is what you're getting when you're going into the orange color. So as you can see, at least when you're trying to do this with a finger, it's not really working. I was actually quite taken aback because I was expecting a punch of color and I am not getting that and that is a concern when I make a decision about the palette. So I just want you to know that right away. This is how these things make me feel. Now going, moving towards these eyeshadows, these I believe swatched pretty well. The only thing I want to point out is anytime I swatch these types of colors, these transition shades, anytime I swatch something like this, they never really show up on my arm, on my skin tone, because I think I'm so similar to all of these colors, and it's not anything against this palette, it's just the way anything like this would swatch. I could be swatching Viseart, right? And still nothing, or very, very neutral, really nothing. But these things are transition shades anyway, so I wouldn't worry about them too much being that way. So I think on deeper skin tones, these would swatch marvelously. So it's not just about this palette. Anytime I'm swatching something like that, it would happen. I'm going to start applying the eyeshadows. I am wearing the foundation. I have set my face. I have filled my lips with, yes, this is the bite. I received this as a sample, I guess, with one of my purchases from Sephora. And um, I like how it looks and I filled my lips in so that I don't look so pale. Yes, I am wearing Kat Von D foundation and primer primer and foundation, sorry, and I have set my face with the Laura Mercier uh, setting powder and I am wearing a concealer. Right now things are looking a bit wild because I am actually trying to grow out my eyebrows to see if anything that I have accidentally plucked out is going to come back and I don't want to mutilate them any further. So it is a little bit wild, I get it. So I have primed my eyes with MAC Paint Pot and Soft Ochre. I'm going to uh, go ahead and start applying this transition shade right here, the first one all over my lid. This is the Wayne Gosso 4 and I'm just going to start applying this all over my eyelids. I am going to go in into this third color down, this uh, kind of a cute little brown, I guess, with the same brush, Wayne Gosso 4, and I'm going to kind of shape up a little bit my crease. this beautiful orange right here and I'm going to again with the same brush I'm going to kind of keep building the crease area. I am 
brush, this one by Wayne Goss, of course, and I'm going to go in into this um, purple right here, and I'm going to tuck that into the lower part of the eyelid right here. <laughs> and I will put some of that on my upper uh, lid because anytime I go in with a shimmer or like the full color to prevent the creasing I like to ensure that it would stay put with the glitter glue. I'm going to grab of course my Wayne Goss uh, flat brush right here 06 and I'm going to go in into this beautiful dark blue right here I'm going to pack it onto my lids and I want to go ahead and I want to spray my brush and I want to intensify this blue. I mean it's pretty intense right now but I just feel like it needs a little bit more. This black right here to kind of smoke it out at the corners. on to the uh, top area of the eyeball right now I'm just blending uh, with the same brush and blending the margins right here to make sure that the blue flows nice nicely into that dark um, the black color going to this upper color right here, this transformer, to define my brow bone, but like I said, I'm not going to do it on this side because of the obvious uh, thing going on with that mole. I'm going to also go in into this color right here, and I'm going to pop it in into the tear duct area. I'm not sure if I should be contouring or bronzing with this one or this one. I'm just kind of going to go ahead and go into this color right here. No, actually, I'm going to go in into this middle color right here to kind of contour with it. to this a uh, warm blush blusher right here Okay, 
so now that that's done, I definitely need to use their palette to obviously put on the lipstick color. And to be honest with you, I'm very hesitant. I already know that they don't have a lot of pigments, so not sure how it's going to perform for me. Knowing that it doesn't perform with my finger, I am going to go into this with this small concealer elf brush and I'm going to go into this orangey color right here and see what basically happens. Honestly, nothing happened. So I can tell you right now already that I'm not going to be using these guys to put on any lipsticks. This is just a waste of my time. Right now, the favorite of the season for me is this um, Too Faced limited edition gingerbread liquid lip. And I feel like this is going to flow nicely with the blue eyeshadow. So I'm going to just pop her right in. So now all we need basically is just some mascara. So this is by Stila. Ooh. <laughs> Yes, I did bend this, I remember now. But I'm still gonna use her. It's a huge one. I don't like these ones, by the way. Very clunky, very clumpy. I think this might be getting too old. Mm. Bye! Okay, guys, so that completes the look. Oh, and the setting spray, of course. What am I talking about? Ah, ah. And let's go ahead and give you the specs and all the tea on this palette, right? Right. I want to go from the good stuff and move to the bad stuff. So, the good stuff is this. I do like these eyeshadows. These colors right here are very good. I considered that this, this blue actually performed beautifully, so did this orange color right here, so did these normal colors, beautiful colors, and this black one right here actually blends very well, and I feel like if you want to do like a really cool smoky eye, I think that that's your guy right there. The purple worked nicely for me. No, it's not the most radiant or beautiful purple you will see, but it actually is true to this color when you pop it onto your eyelids. So I would say I absolutely unequivocally, if this was alone, approve these eyeshadows. Now let's talk about these transformers. Yes, I actually think that they are cool. So these guys are duochromes and they kind of have the shift to them. And I feel like they add a, a lot of oomph to the look when you pop these colors into the corners of your eyes or if you want to highlight with them or if you want to pop them on top of the lid so they work beautifully. These colors right here, your bronzer, your contour and highlight and the blusher, very normal, ordinary stuff. So there is nothing special about these colors. They are very normal kind of colors that you would expect in any kind of type of stuff or palette like this. So if you had a contouring palette, you probably would see the same colors. If you have blushers and, you know, these are just your ordinary colors. But these are very important elements in makeup and sculpting of the shape of the face. So yes, absolutely nice. Actually blended very nice for me. Uh, forgot to tell you that there is not any much, really, no significant fallout with these eyeshadows, no significant fallout with these uh, duochromes either. But I was working with the um, natural brushes, natural fiber brushes with Wayne Goss, and I do believe that the natural ones pick up the pigments, the colors a bit better than synthetic. So if you are working with synthetics, who knows what result you got, I don't know. I can't speak to that because I worked with um, natural fiber brushes. There's nothing wrong with synthetics. I actually think that the Real Technique brushes are beautiful. I have some of these and I do use them periodically. And I have in blood brushes and all of that. So nothing wrong with that. I actually like elf brushes as well. So now that I've talked about the good stuff, this is, um, these are the good guys. Really like them. I really, really like the colors in here. These are my colors, they speak to me. These are really winter colors. Absolutely adore, adore them, unequivocally approve them. Now let's talk about the bad stuff. First of all, 
I just want to address this is something that I keep seeing on Sephora's website in other kind of places as well, of course, in department stores. When the product is, when something is sold for, like say this is, this is sold for $65, right? So they say this is $65 and then underneath they tell you it's a $220 value. Wow. So I think that I find that information, to be honest with you, a piece of irrelevant information because I could live without knowing it's a value of $220. First of all, I don't think so. Second of all, it's pointless to me because I'm buying it for $65. You're not selling it to me for $220. I don't want you to try to up the game by saying this is such a good deal and you're only getting it for $65. It's kind of gimmicky that way. So I would have really appreciated if that practice would have stopped. I don't know why they do it, but this is what they do. And maybe that's, maybe that's important in sales. I, I'm not a company. I don't know. I cannot tell you, but I wouldn't do it. So anyways, I did not pay $65 for it either, though. I actually paid way less. I went to Sephora in Clackamas Town Center and I picked it up on one of those days when every once in a while um, Sephora has like some like really good special deal or something goes on a really awesome sale. I don't remember at the top of my head, but I think I paid like maybe $38 for this palette. So to be honest with you, for $38 or $32, absolutely I approve this palette. I can tell, I would, I would tell you this right, right then and there, and we wouldn't even go into the bad stuff, right? There would be no point for that kind of money. For $220, I would have never looked at this palette. For $65, I would never actually bought this palette because I don't think that it's worth $65. For $32 or $38. I think it's the right about right, it's right on the money. So absolutely, I bought that palette at that kind of a deal, I snatched it and I'm pretty happy about that. I think I would have been bitterly disappointed if I paid $65 for it. So I'm sorry to those who have bought it for that. These guys right here, I'm going to tell you right away, no, I do not approve them. It absolutely doesn't have any pigment in it. It's such a disappointment. I don't know what kind of makeup artist you have to be to be able to work with these. I wouldn't. Um, it looks beautiful in the pen. I absolutely love what it looks like in the pen. It looks nothing like this on the lips. Um, and I actually come to conclusion that I also don't really like lipsticks pressed into the pens. I think I prefer lipsticks in the lipstick normal composite, you know, the one you have to turn out of, like lipstick lipsticks. So. This is not approved, not because I don't like that they're not in the pans, but because there is zero pigment. It's such a disappointment. It kind of feels oily and watery. It's like sort of like Vaseline or glycerin on your finger. There's absolutely nothing going on. I'm going into this color right there and I got this kind of a yucky, dirty mess. I don't like that. It's not something I want to see on my lips. It's something in between lip glosses which I don't like, and some pretty bad quality lipsticks. So this is absolutely not approved. Now, with this insert that they give you information, again, I, I would not even look into inside of this. You might want to look at it. It kind of reminds me of something like, here's your crock pot and here's the recipe book. So maybe if you want to kind of use this as guidelines to do your eye look and all of that, personally, I, I don't find that this is any helpful. Also, because I don't see well, I can barely read. They have put such small font in it that to me, it's wasteful. I would not use, in order for me to read something like this, let me just show you. In order for me to read something like this, I have to use a magnifying glass like that. Why would I do that? I already use my magnifying glass to read other things and this is just an option. And yes, I understand that not everybody out there has poor vision. But can you please include people with poor vision and make the font a teensy-weensy little bit bigger? I don't know. Since you're already pr printing a book and even a large font would take maybe two more pages, but you already have this book with lots of pages, what would it be if you, would it really uh, cost you that much more if you put another two pages in it to make a font larger? And when I was trying to find out where these eyeshadows were manufactured, I could not find it on this box. I'm sure, I'm sure it's on this box, but for the, for the love of makeup, I couldn't find it. Me and my husband, we looked at this box and he has normal vision and he said, 
I can't find it. It's such a small text. It's all crammed in it. It's not easy to find uh, information that I'm looking for. And the information I'm looking for is I want to know where these guys are manufactured. So we did find that the palette is assembled in the United States, but I cannot tell you where it's manufactured. Is it manufactured in California, Canada, China? I don't know. Maybe Canada, but I haven't confirmed that, so I cannot say for sure. When you open these guys, this is extremely sharp, flimsy plastic. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of flimsy, and I would have preferred something like Inglot, where it slides off. If you're trying to give me a palette that is a kind of like a transformer, you, these things come out, then make an extra step and try to maybe make this thing slide or I can see what they're doing they're trying to do like a movie theme right here because this is like your uh, your role of film and this is actually very cute and nothing is wrong with that design it's beautiful but maybe they should have done where instead of opening like this you know they could have had this whole thing slide out you know like slide up and down that would have been actually kind of cool. That way you could be sliding these guys out and exposing only the color that you need to use without exposing the whole thing and like opening it like this. This, if this was a courtroom, I would say um, it's a hung jury. What it means is that we couldn't come to a decision. And primarily I cannot come to the decision is because I want to approve this palette, I really do, because the the money I paid for it is very fair. I did not pay a lot of money for it, and even $65 for this a lot of product is possibly fair, but I cannot approve this palette because of the lipsticks that don't work. Have they not been included in the palette, this palette would get approved right away. If I could approve the palette partially, I would approve these fellows right here the eyeshadows and the transformers and of course I would approve these because these are very usable colors. So if you can accept my decision that Olga Guffey approves this palette, Gate and Transform Master Palette by Smashbox, it's partially approved. <laughs> that would be my answer to you guys and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it thumbs up. Please um, let me know in the questions and comments in the comment section down below if you have any questions, if you want me to review any other product like this, like uh, transformers or uh, some kind of new eyeshadows that are on the market. I'll go and get it and review it for you guys. And I will see you all in my next video. I love you. Bye.